Astronomers are continuing to track a newly spotted object, likely a comet, from outside our solar system. The interloper, named 3I Atlas, was first spotted on July 1st. On the 12th of August, 2025, the world's most sensitive space camera caught a comet doing the impossible. It fired a plume of dust straight toward the sun, exactly the direction gravity and sunlight say it can't go. NASA's own data calls it a sunward jet. Translation, something is pushing this iceberg-sized visitor like a thruster on a spacecraft. Tonight, we're going to unpack every kilobyte of that file and ask the question mainstream scientists keep whispering in the hallways. Are we looking at the first hard evidence of alien propulsion? Back in June of this year, automated telescopes in the Atlas Survey in Hawaii flagged a faint smudge of light, a smudge that simply wasn't on yesterday's star map. It was moving at a velocity of about 135,000 miles per hour, going really, really fast. Within minutes, the alert pinged every major observatory on Earth. New object, speed 130,000 miles per hour, trajectory hyperbolic. This thing was not staying. It was headed for its closest pass to the sun at the end of October. Official designation C2025G3, but we know it by its nickname, 3I Atlas, making it only the third interstellar visitor ever seen in our solar system. The first images looked routine enough. A tiny nucleus, a fan-shaped tail streaking away from the sun. Textbook comet behavior, right? Nothing to see here. Then the Hubble Space Telescope took its first close-up on August 6th, and that's when the first shocking detail emerged. What Hubble saw sent a ripple of disbelief through the entire scientific community. A thin, bright finger poked sunward, while the main tail streamed anti-sunward, the cosmic equivalent of a smoking gun pointing backwards. Astronomers thought it had to be a camera artifact. They checked and rechecked. It wasn't. 32 hours later, the plume was still there, brighter, curved, almost like a bicep flexing. This wasn't a flicker or a temporary anomaly. It was a constant, sustained feature. The thing nobody tells you is just how bizarre this is. You see, comet tails aren't rocket exhaust. They're just debris caught in a one-way breeze of sunlight and charged particles. Dust gets shoved outward away from the sun. Gas ions get dragged along magnetic field lines, always downwind. A sunward jet breaks this fundamental principle of the cosmos, the way a flag fluttering directly into a hurricane would. It defies the fundamental principles of astrophysics. Outgassing, the natural release of gases from a comet's surface, can't do it either. The pressure is higher on the day side, the side facing the sun, so any vent would naturally squirt away from the sun. It's like trying to push water uphill with a garden hose. Gravity can't do it either. Dust grains big enough to ignore radiation pressure are far too heavy for the nucleus's microgravity to fling back toward the sun. Yet this impossible plume persisted for 10 days, spanning an unbelievable 56,000 kilometers, wider than four Earths side by side. This celestial body is not just passing through, it's actively fighting against the forces of the Sun. Let's talk accelerations. The nucleus mass of 3I Atlas is roughly 5 billion kilograms, give or take a mountain. To bend that much dust sunward, you need an impulse of about 1.6 newtons acting for six hours. That sounds tiny, about the force of three cheeseburgers resting on your hand. But in the vacuum of space, that's enough delta V, or change in velocity, to shift the entire comet's path by kilometers per day. This wasn't a tiny, unpredictable nudge. This was propulsion. Astrometric tracking the high-precision measurement of an object's position, confirmed it. 3I Atlas was not following a path dictated by gravity. There was a consistent, sustained force pushing it, and the direction of that push aligned perfectly with its impossible sun-pointing tail. To get that much push from normal water-ice sublimation, the comet would need to be losing 10 times more mass than what astronomers could actually see. 
the numbers simply didn't add up. Computer simulations came to a startling conclusion. The only way to match the observations was if 3i Atlas had a focused sunward firing jet emitting mostly heavy grains of dust. The estimated thrust was around 0.4 millinewtons, a tiny amount of force, but comparable to the ion engines we use on our most advanced spacecraft. Then, the James Webb Space Telescope delivered the next bombshell. By analyzing the light from the comet's coma, scientists can determine its chemical makeup. What they found in 3i Atlas was mind-boggling. Spectroscopes on Gemini South and JWST recorded CO2 outgassing eight times stronger than water vapor. Most comets in our solar system have a fairly balanced ratio of carbon dioxide to water. This one is basically dry ice on steroids, overwhelmingly dominated by carbon dioxide. The weird chemistry feeds the propulsion narrative. High CO2 could hide a cold gas thruster signature, super chill jets cutting sideways across orbital mechanics. But the real wow factor was the metal. The telescope detected atomic nickel vapor in the coma, and a lot of it, but its usual partner, iron, was completely missing. In our solar system, nickel and iron are cosmic brothers. They are almost always found together, forged in the same stellar furnaces. Finding one without the other is like finding a single footprint in the snow in the middle of the desert. It just shouldn't be there. This bizarre chemical signature, combined with its engine-like thrust, elevated 3i Atlas from a curiosity to a profound, unnerving enigma. Harvard physicist Avi Loeb, former chair of the astronomy department, has seen the same plots you're looking at. His take? If the outflow is collimated and episodic, nature needs a coincidence factor north of 1 in 10,000. Translation, possible, but you'd better buy lottery tickets. This pattern of anomalies, an impossible movement and a strange makeup had been seen once before, a familiar strangeness. Before 3i Atlas, there was Oumuamua, the first interstellar object ever detected. Oumuamua shot through our solar system in 2017 and left a trail of unanswered questions that still haunt astronomers today. It was small, shaped like a cigar or a pancake, and it was moving in a way that gravity couldn't explain. Just like Atlas, it displayed non-gravitational acceleration. But here's the thing that made Oumuamua so spooky. It had no tail, no coma, no visible outgassing at all, yet something was pushing it. This led to a storm of controversy and speculation. The most famous and most divisive idea came from Avi Loeb, who proposed that Oumuamua could be an artificial object, a light sail created by an alien civilization. He argued that the push could be explained by the pressure of sunlight acting on a very thin, very light surface. Loeb's 2021 paper on Oumuamua showed that even a micron-thin light sail only a few dozen meters wide could catch enough sunlight to accelerate by the exact amount measure. The idea was met with huge skepticism from the mainstream scientific community, who tried to find natural explanations like hidden jets of hydrogen gas. But none of the explanations fit the data perfectly. 3i Atlas is bulkier, but the same math scales. Reflectivity plus collimated jet equals net thrust. When reporters asked if he meant alien tech, he replied, I follow evidence, not comfort. NASA's press officers winced. The internet went berserk. Before we sail to Proxima Centauri on hype alone, let's road test the conservative fixes. Scientists rushed to their computers running every model they had. None of them worked perfectly. Option one, extreme viewing geometry. Earth sat 47 degrees above the orbital plane in August. That foreshortening can fold a broad fan-shaped tail into a narrow spike pointing anywhere on the sky, maybe even sunward. But Hubble's orbit gives multiple angles. The spike stayed in every shot, maintaining its impossible direction. So geometry alone can't explain it. Option two, solar wind eddies. Magneto-hydrodynamic models show that under rare magnetic reconnection events, dust entrained in ion tails can U-turn. Problem is, you need micron-sized charged grains for that to happen. Gemini data favor millimeter brains that barely feel the magnetic field. It's like trying to push a bowling ball with a feather. Option three, nucleus spin. A tumbling core can spray like a garden sprinkler, creating complex patterns. But the plume's curvature matches a single vector, a focused push, not a chaotic spray from a rotating source. Each natural fix 
solves about 80% of the puzzle, leaving a stubborn fifth that won't budge. This wasn't a flicker or a temporary anomaly. It was a constant, sustained feature. The thing nobody tells you is just how bizarre this is. Microbiologists watching this unfold chuckled because they've seen comet tails before, not in space, but inside petri dishes. When the bacterium Listeria wants to cross a cell, it hijacks actin filaments. These filaments polymerize behind the bug, forming a dense tail that pushes it forward like a rocket. No combustion, no heat, just geometry and chemistry doing the work. The similarity is linguistic, not physical, of course, but the visual is uncanny. A blob racing ahead with a tail streaming opposite the direction of motion. Nature converges on the same trick in wildly different arenas, enough to make you wonder what other blueprints she's hiding in plain sight. It certainly makes you pause and consider the elegance of propulsion, regardless of scale. Let's package the weirdness, shall we? These aren't just minor quirks. These are fundamental challenges to our understanding. 1. Persistent sunward jet, lasting 10 days, with a flux stable within 5%. This isn't a momentary hiccup. It's a sustained, directed force. 2. CO2 to water ratio, an astonishing eight-fold higher than any known comet, implying formation beyond the CO2 snow line of an unknown star system. This isn't your garden variety comet. 3. Episodic spikes in brightness, synchronous with the jet, suggesting on-off thrust cycles rather than a continuous bleed. If you saw these graphs attached to a classified military satellite, you'd assume onboard attitude thrusters. The only reason we're calling it a comet is because it looks like one from a distance. The pattern of these anomalies, an impossible movement and a strange makeup, had been seen once before with Oumuamua. And having two such anomalies in just a few years is statistically mind-blowing. The universe is showing us something that breaks our models, and it has done it twice. It suggests that these objects may be far more common in our galaxy than we ever imagined. Buried on page 17 of a NASA small body's risk assessment is a single line that keeps conspiracy printers warm. Anomalous acceleration noted. Delta V budget exceeds outgassing model 2.3 sigma. Translation, the thing changed speed more than the safest spreadsheet says it should. Two sigma events happen 5% of the time, rare, but not impossible. Still, in aerospace, that margin would ground the space shuttle. That note was quietly removed in a revised PDF two days later. NASA claims typographical error. Reddit claims cover-up. Raw FITS files are still public, so for now, transparency wins. Yet the episode feeds the narrative that someone upstairs is nervous. It certainly makes you wonder why a simple typo would require such a swift and quiet correction, especially for a celestial body that is already defying so many of our expectations. Suppose for a heartbeat, this is a von Neumann probe wrapped in comet camouflage. A reflective sail covered by a thin veneer of ice could masquerade as natural until close inspection. Periodic jets vent volatiles for course corrections, keeping the visitor in optimal scan range of the habitable zone. If that sounds like science fiction, remember every big telescope on Earth is funded under dual-use astronomy, astrophysics, and planetary defense. The same instruments that study asteroid hazards hunk for artifacts. The object's path was another puzzle. It was tilted just five degrees from Earth's own path around the Sun, an alignment so precise that the odds of it happening by chance are less than one in 500. As if that weren't enough, its trajectory was set to take it on close flybys of Mars, Venus, and Jupiter a sequence of cosmic hellos with a probability of less than 1 in 20,000. This thing wasn't just passing through, it was taking the scenic route. 
From the moment it was spotted, 3 i Atlas was screaming that it was something new, something that didn't fit into our neat little boxes of what an interstellar object should be. No signal has been picked up, but SETI dishes were not pointing that way in August. By the time they pivoted, 3i Atlas had crossed Jupiter's orbit outbound, too dim for radio triangulation. We may have missed the phone call. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? That the universe might have sent us a message or a visitor, and we were simply looking the other way. The comet is already climbing back into interstellar night, fading from our view. By January 2026, it will cross Neptune's distance, fading below 24th magnitude, beyond Hubble's reach, unless it piggybacks on the Roman Space Telescope's wider mirror. JWST has been granted a single discretionary slice in December to chase carbon monoxide lines. If the Sunward jet reignites, we get another clue. If not, the file stays open, but gathers dust. Either way, the window for decisive data is months, not years. The urgency is real. Amateur astronomers with 14-inch scopes under dark skies can still photometer the coma. Every extra dot on the light curve tightens the model, helps us understand this enigma a little better. Science runs on humility. If future modeling shows a mundane mechanism, say a carbon monoxide pocket that bursts through a sun-facing fault, today's video becomes a footnote in the long chronicle of anomalies that turned ordinary once the math caught up. And that's fine. Every hypothesis starts as fringe and graduates to fact or folklore. The bigger risk, the real danger, is dismissing the anomaly simply because it sounds unlikely, because it challenges our comfort zone. The history of planetary science is littered with things once thought impossible. Ice geysers on Enceladus, liquid methane lakes on Titan, lightning on Venus. Each met skepticism until someone looked harder. Three High Atlas is reminding us to keep looking, to question, and to embrace the unknown. It's reminding us that the universe is far stranger and far more interesting than we often allow ourselves to imagine. So where do you land? Team Extraordinary Evidence says 8 Sigma Chemistry plus Sunward Thrust equals technology until proven otherwise. Team Occam says ice plus sunlight plus statistics equals nature we haven't fully modeled. Many people are crazy about this because it's a mystery playing out in real time, right in our own cosmic backyard. Scroll down, pick a lane, and type your verdict. If enough of you vote artificial, we'll forward the tally to the NASA Small Bodies Assessment Group. Public pressure has pushed targets onto JWST dockets before. Make it polite, make it data-driven, but make it loud. The universe doesn't care about majority opinion. Scientists sometimes do. If this story bent your mind, hit like so the algorithm shows it to the next skeptic. Subscribe for weekly deep dives that treat wild ideas with serious maths. And ring the bell because 3 i Atlas might reignite and you'll want the alert. Share the link to your favorite physics teacher. Let them use it as Friday's pop quiz. Comments are open. Tag someone who still thinks comments are just dirty snowballs. We started with a pixel that shouldn't point at the sun. We end with two possibilities, each staggering. Either the universe just taught us a new chapter in plasma physics using an interstellar snowball, or we've glimpsed the exhaust of someone else's drive system. Either way, the skies will never feel quite as empty again. The next time you look up, remember, something that visited us this year is still climbing outward, maybe silent, maybe watching, maybe just waiting for our maths to grow up. Until we know for sure, keep your eyes on the stars and on the data.